Did you know that there's four different versions of Firefox? Maybe you've heard of Firefox Nightly or Firefox Developer Edition. I get asked, what, what's the difference between Developer Edition and the regular version of Firefox? I'm going to answer those questions for you. And actually, there's more than four versions of Firefox. There are many, many, many. If I click this Download Now button, it's going to know that I'm on a Macintosh computer and it's going to start downloading the Mac version. But if I click Advanced Options, you can see here there's Windows and Mac and Linux and uh, of course, right, Android and iOS, and there's a bunch of different versions of the Firefox browser. But what I mean specifically is for folks who make websites, who are developers or designers or otherwise involved in understanding web technology and keeping track of the future of the web, there are in fact four browsers that you might want to consider in order to best keep track of what's going on. And you can see here in the bottom, there's links to developer edition, beta. You can also get these same browsers for Android, beta for Android, nightly for Android. What are those? There's the regular version of Firefox browser. That's what your users are going to have. The people who go to your websites, they're going to be using the release version of whichever browser they're using. Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Edge. Then there are two copies of Firefox, two versions, channels that are one version ahead. Right now it's December of 2019 and Firefox 71 just came out. So the beta channel and the developer edition channel, they just advanced to Firefox 72. They're one version ahead of the current version of Firefox. And then Firefox Nightly is two versions ahead. It just switched to Firefox 73. That's the biggest difference between these four browsers. How far in advance into the future are they? So why do we care about the future? Well, you may be a person who goes to a website like Can I Use quite a lot to see is that CSS property that you want to use or that JavaScript API you want to use or that HTML element or that other, other kind of web technology, is it in browsers yet? And frequently what we're focused on is current versions. And you can see here this row where the current version of Edge right now is Edge 18, Firefox 71, Chrome 78, Safari 13, Opera 64. Like those are the current browsers that are out right now. You can see that the future is going to bring us Edge 76, Firefox 72 and 73, Chrome 79 to 80, you know, on into the future, Safari TP, which stands for Technical Preview. These browsers are going to give us information about what's coming in the future. And if we use them, we can test things out. We can see, we can actually run code in a future version of these browsers. In many ways, this is a lot like how websites are built, where there's a production server, the live server that has the code that people go to when they go to a website. Then there's a QA server or a staging server, or sometimes both, where the QA department will test what's going on on the QA server while the content team is adding content to the staging server and getting it ready to be released into the next version of that website. And then the developer website, the dev server, is the place where developers can land code when they think it's ready and it can be integrated into the rest of the code. It's exactly the same way with Firefox. That's exactly what we're doing. Regular Firefox is what people use when they use Firefox. The beta version of Firefox is the beta version of Firefox. It looks identical to Firefox in every single way. And that's the place where our QA team can test and make sure that Firefox is ready for the next release. Developer edition is this basically the same as beta with a few differences. And I'll talk about those in a moment. It's optimized in a way for developers, folks like you to use the version of Firefox that's coming out soon, but hasn't yet, but with some tweaks. And then Nightly is the kind of dev version of Firefox, where the engineers who are building Firefox can land code and try things out and integrate their code into the rest of Firefox. Nightly will update at least once a day, sometimes twice a day. Uh, it's changing all the time. And if you use Nightly, it's going to ask you to restart all the time in order to get the new up updates and to like get today's code or get the afternoon code, get tomorrow's code for the morning, get tomorrow's code for the afternoon. Um, it is in fact nightly. It's nightly changing all the time. Um, beta and developer edition will change maybe twice a week. So they are getting new code as it lands or bug fixes or changes, but not nearly as often. It's a bit more stable. And Firefox in general, in recent years, 
this whole release schedule has taken about six weeks where a new version of Firefox comes out roughly every six weeks, sometimes six to eight weeks, depending on the calendar. But we're, we're accelerating that in 2020. We're going to start going faster. We're going to start releasing Firefox every four weeks-ish. Uh, and you'll see this go, you know, quicker. The next version of beta, you know, you could start testing your website in beta or in developer edition, uh, knowing that two, three, four weeks away, that will be the release version of Firefox. If you've been using these other versions of Firefox for a while, then you might remember that for a long time, you couldn't open two different channels for Firefox at the same time. You couldn't open regular Firefox and Firefox beta or Firefox developer edition or Firefox nightly all at the same time. That's changed. You can now. Each of them will have their own profiles. Each of them will keep their keep track separately of your bookmarks and who you, how you have your preferences set and all those kinds of things. And you can open nightly at the same time as release Firefox or dev edition at the same time as another one, uh, which is pretty great. It was, took a big, there's a lot of work to fix that, to change that. And that happened over the last year or two. And so now everybody's all set. And if you do want to sync your bookmarks, like you want the bookmarks in dev edition to be the same as the bookmarks in your release copy of Firefox, you can use the Firefox accounts to do that and just log into Firefox accounts in every version of Firefox, including on Android or on, on another computer or on a different operating system. And uh, your, your Firefox accounts will like sync that kind of information back and forth for you to keep track of your passwords and that kind of stuff. So one what does Firefox Developer Edition have that's different than the other versions of Firefox? For one, there's a few security measures that are taken on all the other Firefoxes that Developer Edition is more permissible around. Firefox Developer Edition is a bit more lax around security for good reasons. So for one example, if you are a person who's creating a web extension for Firefox, an add-on, and you need to be able to run your add-on when it's half done, before it's been released, while you're still writing the code, while you're, it's still being worked on. You can do that in Firefox Developer Edition. You can't run a not yet officially released extension in the regular version of Firefox because of security reasons. We, you need a certificate it needs to be signed on through Mozilla's add-on service in order to make sure that folks, bad actors, aren't able to run terrible code uh, through extensions and do terrible things to people's browsers. Um, so there's security measures in place in the regular version of Firefox. They're not in the developer edition of Firefox. It's also true that sometimes we take some things that are a little bit not quite ready for regular release yet, and we sort of release them into the developer edition first. So recently it was WebSocket and Multiline Editor that were on in de by default in the developer edition, so sort of kind of early access, but they weren't on in beta just as a way to get some more folks and in fact, if you want to help us out, one of the ways that you can help us is to run Developer Edition just by having more traffic on Developer Edition and more people with their eyeballs on things we're preparing for Firefox. There's also a few things that are slightly different as a default when you download Developer Edition, and you might have noticed this if you've ever used it before. Um, for example, up here, the, this, the, the bar at the top with the URL and the tabs and this whole Chrome, the interface, um, that is a dark, it's in dark mode. Um, when you make a new tab page, it's dark. Um, oh, down here, this is called, these are called snippets where we kind of let you know about new things or things that you might be interested in. And in developer edition, these snippets might be more focused on things that are of interest to developers, like videos like this one might be appear in snippets. This dark bar is not only available in Firefox developer edition. You can get this in any version of Firefox by just coming over to customize and down here where it says themes you can switch to a light theme or the default theme is the default for the regular version of Firefox the dark theme is the default for Firefox developer edition um, you can also switch the density if you'd like it to be tighter or you'd like it to be normal like you can make that bar take up more or less space by switching it back and forth. The other thing is that dev tools are also by default in this dark mode where everything is all dark. Uh, you can switch that by coming over to settings and switch it to light mode. So in any version of Firefox, any channel of Firefox, you can use the dark dev tools or the light dev tools, whichever one you prefer. And this is changing separate from this bar up here, at least at the moment, that's how it works. It also has a different logo. It's a cool logo. It's kind of beautiful. Nightly also has a different logo. Really beautiful. 
I love this one maybe the best personally. I also want to talk about one more thing that makes it a little bit more complex. Nightly, developer edition, beta, regular Firefox. Sometimes there's new features. The code is in that browser, but it's not turned on. This especially happens in Nightly. Something is new, something isn't quite tested yet. We're a bit nervous about it, but we do want to integrate it. It's in the browser, but it's behind a pref. You have to actually go in and change this preference in order for it to work. Sometimes there's things that stay in Nightly behind a flag for a long time, maybe many weeks. Maybe it's going to take weeks or months to build something that's a big deal. It will be in Nightly behind a pref, and the people who are in the know or who need to try it out or who want really want to try it out and kind of know what they're doing, you can go in and change that preference and say, hey, you know what? I would like you to turn that on. Not just in Nightly, also in every version of Firefox. Basically what you do if you want to change a preference is you go into, you type about colon config into the URL bar and it takes you into this secret world where you can look up all the different things that are being changed. You can find it, you type in the name of what you're looking for, you click the little um, button and you toggle it to turn it on. So here I am in my version of Firefox Nightly and I can type in about colon config. There's a warning here that you should read and if you're cool with this being like, ooh, secret important stuff, um, then you can come back into the behind the scenes. For instance, web render is something that we're working on right now. And if you want to be able to use the colorblindness simulator, or you want to be able to use some of the other features that are coming in CSS, like backdrop filter, you can turn on web render and see how those work or how they're going to work for our users once things land in regular version of Firefox without the pref. But right now you need to turn on the pref. So I can come here um, and I can see this little arrow, this curvy arrow, this means that uh, something has already been changed from the default, but if I want to reset it back to the default, then I can click it. Or here's, this is a toggle button. So if it's false, so by default right now in your copy, our cop, most cop people's copies, it's off. So it says false and you can toggle it to turn it on to true. Sometimes you need to restart Firefox. You have to actually quit and restart in order for the effect to take a hold. Sometimes it seems like you can simply open a new window. Or sometimes it seems like you can just open a new tab. Sometimes it seems like, oh, all the tabs you already have open, it's totally fine. It depends. So if you've turned something on and it doesn't seem like it's working yet, then do one of those things. Open a new window or quit and restart the browser and it probably will start working then. So this is how Firefox advances. This is how things get invented and get released into Firefox, to get from an idea to running code, to code that's been tested, that's robust, to actually in the hands of our customers and our users. Uh, things land usually behind a flag, behind a pref, then they have the pref taken off, then they go from nightly to developer edition and beta, and then they go from developer edition and beta into the regular Firefox. This is something that all the browsers do. WebKit, for instance, Safari, there's a WebKit build browser that you can check out. There's a Safari technical preview, which might be the best place to test something to see what's gonna be coming out in the next version of Safari when it comes out, uh, usually in the spring or the fall, a new version of Safari comes out. Sometimes things come out in between. Edge has the exact same thing with Canary being kind of every night and developer edition being a little bit slower, but still pretty quick. Uh, beta and then the regular version of Edge. It's identical to what Chrome is doing with Chrome Canary, Chrome Dev, Beta, and Chrome. If you want to download any of these browsers, I like going to nightly.mozilla.org. Takes you straight to the page where you can download Beta or Developer Edition or Nightly. Uh, you can go to this webkit.org slash downloads page and download Safari Technical Preview or the WebKit Build. You can go to the Microsoft Edge Insider channel and download Beta or Dev or Canary. Same thing with Chrome. If you scroll down to the bottom of a Chrome download page, you can see here the links for Beta, Dev, 
and Canary. It's a really great way to keep track of what's coming on the web to see if you like what it is that the CSS working group or the JavaScript working groups or the folks coming up with new APIs, new HTML elements, new HTML superpowers on the web. If you're at all involved in any of those conversations on any level at all, if you just want to see something that you've heard about that you're interested in but hasn't quite landed in browsers yet, you can download any of these other channels, these other versions of each of these browsers and see what's coming next. What's the future going to hold? Run some code, test your website, try some demos, be part of the conversation and help make sure that the new technology that lands on the web is the kind of technology that you and your team and your projects need.